Well, good evening again, and welcome to Seaside Chats with the Salve Admit Guy. Uh, I am the Salve Admit Guy, Jim Fowler, Vice President for Enrollment Management at Salve Regina University in amazing, beautiful Newport, Rhode Island, uh, sitting virtually on the back deck of our 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 iconic ochre court uh, overlooking the cliffs and the Atlantic Ocean here in Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, this evening, uh, I'm joined by uh, members of our Department of Mathematics to have a, a great discussion about options for students interested in mathematics and data science and even have a little chat about options for students uh, perhaps thinking about engineering. We're recording this session, so uh, if you log in late or if you uh, want to go back and look at some things or if you're looking at this for the first time, uh, know that we're recording this on a Tuesday evening in October leading up to the early action and early decision deadlines. So with that, I'm going to uh, introduce our guests this evening, uh, Dr. Ernie Rothman and Dr. Elizabeth Fitzgibbon from the Department of Mathematics. Uh, how are you both tonight? Well, doing very fine. Um, I, I think uh, Dr. Fitzgibbon is probably doing fine too, but I'll let her answer her set. <laughs> and maybe we could sort of jump into it with our backgrounds and tell you about our department. How's that sound? Yeah, that would be great. So uh, while we start with with you, Dr. Rothman, if you want to uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, what brought you to Salve, and and yeah. a little bit a uh, little bit of intro to the department. Okay, well that sounds great. So um, I am Dr. Rothman, as you've already heard, and I'm currently chair of our mathematical sciences department. So it's actually not a mathematics department, although mathematics is kind of our bread and butter most of the time. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that later on because it feeds into all of our really exciting programs. The first is a bit about me. So I received my BS in mathematics at Brooklyn College, part of the City University System of New York. And then from there, I went on to Brown University to get my master's degree and PhD in applied math. Uh, after Brown, I spent about five years at the Cornell Theory Center uh, at Cornell University. Uh, that at the time, that was actually one of five, and then a little bit later on, four nationally funded supercomputer centers. It's really a lot of great energy there, uh, a lot of consulting to uh, engineers and physicists and researchers on the various aspects of the research. So I really learned a lot about high performance computing. Um, so, really exciting time. Uh, but I really did want to teach mostly in a smaller university. So, I did teach. A couple of times at Cornell, I really liked it a lot. I wanted to be in a little bit smaller place, uh, which and probably I, a place with a slightly better climate. Having spent some time in upstate New York myself, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm pretty flexible on climate, so <laughs> that, that wasn't an issue for me, um, or or my wife for that matter. So, uh, came to Salve Regina in 1993. So I've been here. Uh, over 27 years. And during that time, I've taught a variety of courses uh, throughout the curriculum in, in, in our mathematics curriculum, which is mostly our bread and butter. So from uh, very elementary all the way up to uh, master's level, we actually at one point had a master's degree program in applied math. Uh, we don't have that now, uh, but we actually have other exciting things that I'll tell you about later on. Um, I did also teach computer science, and we do have computer science courses. A little bit more about that later. Uh, I've taught in uh, statistics, um, both for uh, you know, as service courses to nursing and, and uh, business majors, but also to our math majors, which is sort of a higher level calculus based uh, probability and statistics. Um, so my Research actually has changed over the years. Uh, early on in, at Brown University, it was mostly numerical analysis and scientific computing. And then at uh, Cornell, I learned more about high performance computing and supercomputers. Uh, also, a little bit more computer science, more about Unix operating system, uh, similar to Linux, if you've heard of that. Um, and then when I came to uh, Salve, the job was more teaching than research and actually still is. 
Uh, but my, but ironically, it actually gave me more flexibility in what kind of scholarly pursuits to follow. So um, I, I got more into a little bit computer science and operating systems, and actually they've produced this really nice book, Mac OS X for Unix geeks. <laughs> Uh, you know, published by O'Reilly. So we had basically four editions. Each edition was really quite a bit different because every time the operating system would change, all of the internals, which is what we were writing about, changed quite a bit. So a lot of fun um, and you know, did really well, um, you know, over the years. So, you know, I've had the opportunity to sort of dabble in a few things that are all related to what we do in the department, mathematics, Computer science, statistics, I actually contributed to a uh, book, Statistics Hacks, also published by O'Reilly. Uh, so lots of fun, <laughs> lots, of, lots of learning always continues. And uh, certainly had the pleasure of working with very, very, very fine colleagues and very, very fine students have gone on to do just amazing things. And I'll tell you about that later on. I think, Liz, you probably have a pretty good story too, as I understand it. Sure, I'll, I'll introduce myself again, Dr. Liz Fitzgibbon, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Mathematical Sciences. And uh, I earned my bachelor's degree in mathematics and secondary education uh, from Long Island University, CW Post. Um, and I, I was actually a high school teacher for about eight years on Long Island um, while earning my master's degree also from, from LIU. Um, in applied mathematics. And then um, after a number of years, decided I was uh, ready to go on, pursue my PhD. So I went to grad school at uh, Boston University and um, in pure mathematics, specifically research area of um, complex dynamical systems, working with my advisor, Bob Devaney, um, and graduated there in 2014 and was looking for uh you know job teaching at his school where i'd get to really have a, a nice close connection with my students and salve regina is was the the perfect place when i found it so um i've been here now six years i guess this will be my seventh um and i've had a nice opportunity to teach a number of things and get involved in a number of different ways in the department so i i usually teach some of the calc 2 calc 3 um, i also teach some of the discrete mathematics and um, i'll be teaching differential equations next semester i've taught some upper level uh, geometry i'm teaching that this semester um, but I've also taught some of the courses in the secondary education program because we have a great uh, math secondary ed program. And so to have somebody who has the math expertise, but also has a background in education has been um, kind of a nice uh, pairing. And so I've taught some of those classes as well. Um, I've served as the, the advisor to the math club and um, to the, the math honor society. And so that's, I think that's a, Good introduction to uh, who I am as a member of this department. Um, yes. Thank you. Of course, behind our engineering uh, efforts and the liaison to that program. That's true. I should say that now. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But okay. yes, yeah, I, I um, felt like there was something, a little something missing when I arrived at Salve that we didn't really have a pathway to engineering. And so working with our department and with the chemistry department, um, we managed to put together an engineering pathway, and so now I serve as the, the faculty liaison to that program. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for, for taking time out tonight to uh, talk to prospective students about uh, our amazing program. Uh, Dr. Rothman, let me ask you, what's, is there anything that's particularly unique about Salve's curriculum and what can students expect in the curriculum at Salve? Well, I mean, I, I don't know that it's unique, but I would say it's very rare. So we're very, we're actually a relatively small school. I mean, you have enormous state um, universities and you have uh, research universities that maybe aren't quite as big, but so we're relatively small. We have a very strong liberal arts core, values based liberal arts core. We're in an absolutely beautiful and safe area of the country uh, in Newport, Rhode Island. Um, and in spite of being small and having a relatively small department and being a relatively small school, we still provide our students 
with amazing opportunities that you would get at larger schools. And part of the reason for that is that because we're small, we could be innovative. We could partner with other schools and we've done this. So our students actually have opportunities to investigate, to have career paths to very high quality, high demand STEM fields. And some of that's through our department, some of that's through chemistry. Um, as a mathematical sciences department, as I noted earlier, not just mathematics, we offer courses in mathematics, of course, but also computer science. And we're, and we're looking at bringing that back. We once had a computer science major. We're now working on a computer science minor. The major went away years ago, but you know, there's an increased demand for it. And we've recently added computer science courses and we're looking at doing more there. We offer statistics, so we, we, we uh, run statistics courses. And actually just this year, we, we uh, introduced a data science and data analytics program. So we offer a major in math, a major in math with secondary ed, minors in mathematics, in data analytics, that's a new minor, just went in this year, uh, mathematical finance, another minor, and there's actually much more. So we have some new exciting programs that just went into effect also this year. We have a three plus two, uh, two program, a partnership with the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth, UMass Dartmouth. And what that does is it gives you three years at Salve Regina, you earn a BA in mathematics with a minor in data analytics, and then you continue your study at UMass Dartmouth, which is a nearby school and tier one research uh, university, one of the best data science programs in the country. Um, and you continue there to your master's degree in data science. So at the, at the end of the fourth year, and the fourth year would be done in residence at UMass Dartmouth, you earn a BA in math. So you complete the requirements of the BA in math. Um, you will have already completed the uh, minor in data analytics after the three years. And then one additional year at UMass Dartmouth, and now you have a master's degree in data science, probably the hottest, highest demand field in existence right now and projected for the next uh, quite a few years. Um, so really hot field, we're really excited about it. Um, we've, we've already had a lot of interest and the program just went into effect. And I mean, every week I get inquiries about it. So we think this is really gonna take off. This is really such a hot field. Um, we also have, I, you're saying something, but I can't hear you. <laughs> I should have unmuted. My apologies. Um, <laughs> let's talk more about that uh, because you know you talked about the fact that data analytics is is in such demand. I mean, the Bureau of Labor Statistics has already marked it as sort of one of the biggest, fastest growing uh, career fields, and with a twenty eight percent increase in jobs over the next decade. Um, also, you know, I know the highest salary too. That, absolutely, higher than and, just the engineering. Which is already very high. Right. And then big data, really, I mean, everybody nowadays hears that term big data, the idea that everything is run on analytics, on on mathematical models, on statistical analysis, um, even in certainly my job, uh, you know, my wife is in healthcare in her job. It's the underpinning of everything. So yeah, yeah. what? Do, how, how do students at Salve get prepared for that type of career path? Very easily, very easily. So first of all, um, let, let me just put out there what data science and analytics is. <laughs> so we know what we're talking about. So, I mean, data science and data analytics are sometimes terms that you use somewhat interchangeably, and sometimes you throw big data in there. So people have sort of different working definitions, but they're all quite closely related. So we could, for the practical purposes, treat them as basically the same thing. So it's about essentially collecting, cleaning, analyzing raw information, identify patterns, draw conclusions, gain insight, and, and support effective decision-making, whether it's in a business or a pharmaceutical uh, company or just about anywhere, uh, Google, Facebook, all of all of the high tech, the social media, all of them use this. I mean, you might argue is that good or bad, but they, they use it, okay? <laughs> you know, so it's, it's up to the individuals and the companies running these things to decide if they're gonna use it for good purposes or, or not such good purposes. 
Uh, so anyway, our program actually provides a very robust foundation in the underpinnings of these. So you have um, computer programming. So, so let, let me back up just one step. So data science is built on a foundation of existing disciplines, mathematics, statistics, and computer science. That's its foundation. And we actually already have that, and we're introducing more computer science. So now we added some data science, and it allows students to do the things that I described earlier. So for the minor, uh, it's actually very, very easy to get that. Um, in fact, we anticipate that students outside of our department, in particular business studies, um, are going to wind up uh, taking advantage of this. So really very few classes you need to take a sequence uh two semester sequence in computer programming in python the most important language in data science today um so that that's six credits math majors already take the first programming course so that's one additional course for math majors then there's a two semester sequence in data science and analytics so new designation mth was math csc computer science sta Statistics and now first time uh, uh, recently is DSA data science and analytics. So we have that designation. So two courses in that introduction to data science and analytics. In that course, you'll also learn a little bit about R, that's uh, statistical programming language. And uh, then a second course, uh, data analysis and visualization. And in that one, you learn a little bit about Tableau, which is another software that's very popular in uh, data analytics and data science. Then after that, just one more course in statistics, either statistical methods and business majors or biology would wind up taking that or other majors. Math majors already take a course in statistical theory. So math majors already have that part covered. So for a math major to do this minor, it would be, uh, see, just three additional courses, and that's it, because you're already doing the other ones. And even if you don't decide to go into, uh, be, to become a data scientist, these still these uh, courses and skills will still make you more marketable. And I, I want to mention one other thing, and it's also why we partnered with UMass Dartmouth, because there are a lot of programs in data science and data analytics, and they take very different approaches. One approach is to emphasize current applications, current software, and how do you use those things, just the methods. The trouble with that approach, with an overemphasis on that, because those, those things are important, but if you're only emphasizing those things, you know how rapidly technology changes? Let me show you something. When I took my first programming course, this is called the punch card, <laughs> okay? And uh, I'm old enough to remember punch cards. <laughs> so we use those things. And everyone thought that was just, you know, that was just amazing. And it also made me not want to take more programming, by the way, at the time. <laughs> then later I did a lot more and loved it. But everyone was saying, you know, PL1 is the language no one's going to use anything else in a couple of years. Two or three years later, nobody heard of PL1, okay? I mean, things change rapidly. So if you have an education that's focused only on current technology and it's not balanced with building blocks, with the fundamentals, you're going to be out of luck because the technology is gonna change and you're gonna be stuck with the older technology and not know the fundamentals to be able to change with the times. The other, the other aspect of that is when you use the software and you, you apply certain methods, sometimes existing methods don't quite fit the problem that you've got. You've got a problem that hasn't been solved before. And it happens not only in research, but in business or any, any uh, job. And now you have to modify existing methods if you don't understand the principles under the underlying those methods, you're stuck. You, you don't know what to do. Okay, so we found in UMass Dartmouth and we've designed our program with the same philosophy that balances the fundamental concepts, the ideas so you understand what's going on together with modern tools. So we think we have that balance. I should have mentioned in the minor data analytics, I mentioned the main courses. There is one additional one that you need to take and the additional one is actually an elective. You could do it in accounting. You could do it, take another computer science course, which we've introduced. You could take an economics course or any other approved course that fits in with that program. So that's so you learn all the fundamentals. You do some real applications in the data science and analytics courses. We, we use real data in that. So we're not just 
you know, here's five numbers, now take their average, right? So we're actually using real numbers and real data. Um, and then there's that application. If you want to do applications to uh, accounting or economics or, you know, maybe at some point biology will, you know, uh, introduce a course that is relevant to this or any, any area, really. Well, I think that, you know, really illustrates the idea that math is foundational to so many different careers, so many different areas of thought, the logic, the just utilization of basic formulas, the statistics, every single business, every career path is going to ex be exposed in some way, shape or form to math. I mean, this is the conversation we have with our kids all the time, right? Uh, with the, and Dr. Fitzgibbon will know what I'm talking about, where you, you, they, they say, why do I have to learn this math stuff? Well, that math stuff is going to inform everything that they do over the course of their life. And, and Dr. Fitzgibbon, let, let me ask you this, you know, what are sort of some other career avenues that graduates of, of Salve's program might consider uh, or might uh, pursue with a with a background in mathematics. So I, I would say two, two ways I want to take that question and one is to talk about our engineering partnership because certainly um, that is that is a, a career that is fundamentally based on mathematics and, and science knowledge. Um, and then there are all the other things that our students do um, so many of which you wouldn't even think of as a, a career that requires a math background, but um, students who have a math background end up doing very, very well for themselves. So I'll start with the engineering partnership. Um, this was uh, just a few years ago that we put this in place, a partnership with Washington University in St. Louis, which is a really, um, you know, internationally recognized school of engineering, um, a research university with uh, incredible resources. So um, they offer multiple engineering pathways at the undergraduate level. And we have partnered with them in two of our majors, our math major and our chemistry major. And our math majors, uh, they do three years at Salve following a regular course sequence for mathematics, along with all of our liberal arts <laughs> core classes. And then they have a choice of either mechanical engineering, electrical engineering or system science and engineering. Um, they would then transfer to WashU for two additional years to finish out that engineering pathway. And they earn um, both a bachelor's degree in mathematics from Salve and a bachelor's in engineering from WashU. And um, with an additional year of uh, three years at WashU instead of just two, they can also earn a master's degree in one of a, a, any number of uh, master's degree uh, programs, concentrations in engineering. So really um, great preparation for um, a career in engineering in, in many different areas. Um, and that, you know, it's a, a unique program though, because it really is three years at Salve, two to three years at WashU for a student who's looking for um, a four, you know, four continuous years at Salve. Uh, it's, you know, you have to be really willing to make that transfer. And we do everything we can to make those students still feel like they are part of the Salve class, that they graduate with their class, that they're uh, one of our uh, alumni and welcome back on campus whenever. But um, there are other students who really feel connected to Salve, they wanna be here for four years. And so we have many students who do <laughs> a regular, you know, four year math degree. And like I said, they go on to careers that you wouldn't have even expected you know, a math background would prepare them for. Um, one in particular, I think he did a double major in math and economics and ended up working, you know, he's working in finance right now um, down in Manhattan, doing really great for himself. And he went to his job interview and uh, came back to campus to say thank you because he found himself talking more about his math background than his business experience in this interview because it was the thing that that the interviewers kept latching on to. Tell us more about your quantitative reasoning skills. Tell us more about your experience with um, linear programming to solve problems in, in business. Um, really, I think their employers are looking for students who can solve problems and think critically, and mathematics is preparing you to do that. Um, we have another one of our alumni who actually, I think, teaches some courses for us. She's a technical writer 
And, um, you know, she, she has that pairing of the strong liberal arts foundation where she has excellent writing skills, but also having the, the mathematical background where she can think algorithmically step-by-step -step processes and, and then it, express those processes to others. And so she writes things like the instructional manual for, for some sort of technical equipment. So um, these are things that you know, don't have to come to school knowing that that's what you want to do with your life. It's okay to just come and enjoy mathematics because you love it. And then you'll find the right fit for you. Well, I think, you know, what you've outlined is really it's the, the difference of the salve experience that that as a smaller institution as an institution that makes underpins everything with that quality liberal arts broad-based educational experience it provides a great opportunity and i hear it from math students all the time that the mentorship they receive from faculty in the math department helps guide them to any number of different directions that maybe they hadn't even considered coming in, but they find that they have a passion in an area and the curriculum is flexible enough to allow them to pursue that without feeling as though they've been left and they're just, you know, literally a number uh, in the case of some larger institutions or uh, where if they're in a department where there's a very distinct mathematical focus and then they, they can't really get out of that pathway um today's world i mean to, to dr rothman's point earlier today's world is all about adaptability and change and so i think the, really the salve advantage is producing graduates that are adaptable that are able to shift with the changing economy and the changing technology and then underpinned with that 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 catholic liberal arts education that provides not only the understanding of why to apply the math, but also the potential pitfalls of applying that math and the ethics associated with that, to Dr. Rothman's point about big data. Uh, and so you put all of that together. I, I think that when we look at our math department, uh, it really is preparing some real powerhouse students, which is which is terrific. Um, I imagine, is there opportunities for students to do uh, any form of research on the undergraduate level, given that sort of level of mentorship? I just want to weigh in on one thing and then hand it over to Liz. So, in terms of preparing for careers, and it's going to feed into this other question you just had. So, adapting adaptability is important, but we also balance that with the fundamentals, with the timeless. So that that's important. Those things haven't changed. Okay, there's certain things that are still true, always been true, always will be true. Those, but having those fundamentals allow you, and understanding them allow you to adapt. So it's really the interplay between the two things. And um, there, there certainly have been ap uh, opportunities to engage in research. I'll let Dr. Fitzgibbon talk more about that in a moment. Uh, but I just want to mention a few other career paths that people would never have guessed, and it, it ties in with this question that you just asked. So we have students, graduates who uh, not only went to Wall Street, but work in banks in Japan. They, they went to graduate schools, either in math, there's one who graduated from our program, went to Columbia University, got his master's degree in mathematical finance. Another one got his PhD. He was a professor, uh, assistant professor of math. And then he decided, you know, he really likes baseball. He loves baseball. He loves math. You know what he's doing now? He's, he's doing sports analytics for the Boston Red Sox. And in real time, he's advising them based on the mathematics that he does, how they should change their strategy. And he actually started doing this in, um, when he was a professor. So he's doing that. So you know, we have students working with the MathWorks, um, the developers of MATLAB, um, working at Newark, the um, Naval uh, Undersea Warfare Center, and just all sorts of things. Um, we also have had a colloquium. We, we had speakers come in from outside and talk about research. These are top level research, tier one research universities that come and give us talks. And then they talk to our students. This happened two thirds of the time it happens. They'll talk to students about internships. So we had one graduate who owns his own business, uh, former student, I guess confidentiality, you can't mention names, but he runs his own consulting business in uh, construction. 
So there's an opportunity to do research and actually an internship with him. See how mathematics is applied to what he's doing. And he's always interested in hiring math majors. He has a double major math and philosophy here, by the way. Um, and uh, then we have George, this one I can mention, he's not a former student. <laughs> George Kaniadakis from Brown University came in and gave us a talk. And right after the talk, there he was talking to students about doing internships in his lab at Brown. So there are a lot of opportunities to do research with us, but also with others in, in the wider community. Um, Dr. Fitzgibbon has actually had more hands-on experience with students in research. So I think maybe um, if, if she doesn't mind, maybe she could uh, you know, add quite a bit to that actually. Sure, sure. So yeah, I would say many different opportunities and it's at varying levels as well. So for example, we've had some just an independent study course where a student, uh, it, it is, it goes back to something, um, Jim, that you said earlier, but about having flexibility, something that makes Salve special and, and math at Salve special is that we really do have some flexibility in the program. The number of cor required courses, number of credits required is low enough to be able to pair with another major or with a minor. Some students have two minors um, and, and students who just really can't get enough of math then can choose to take additional math classes. Um, starting with independent studies where I've, I've worked with a number of students uh, one on one, they've chosen a topic that they're interested in that they wanted to learn more about. We've um, picked a textbook. We've gone through it, you know, chapter by chapter over the course of a semester. It, it's independent in the sense that the student really does have to take responsibility and do quite a bit of work. But um, the, you know, we've we've been able to move through a subject that we would normally not even cover in the curriculum. And so that's kind of where it starts and that a student can can prepare for research by maybe studying an, an in-depth topic. And then we have the um, the capstone classes, which are a requirement of the core curriculum. Every student at Salve takes a capstone in their major. Um, and we've kind of turned those into basically a special topics course where the instructor can kind of um, choose a topic that, that is interesting to them, something related to their research or just a subject that they really enjoy that we don't offer <laughs> on a regular basis. Um, and they they'll offer that course to our seniors in the math program. And again, it's a chance to get involved in a topic that you wouldn't normally see in a regular math curriculum. But then we have students who want to go a step further. They, they start with those independent studies to kind of learn, kind of prepare themselves. Um, and if a student is really seriously interested in a research project, they can work with one of us in the department. Um, and again, it would probably be as an independent study course. They would register for the course. They would earn credit for the course. Yep. Um, but also in mathematics, there are these things called research experiences for undergraduates. And these are NSF funded National Science Foundation. Um, they have them in, in more than just math, but uh, traditionally many of these are offered around the country. Um, every year, traditionally in the summer when students are not in school as an internship, a paid internship in most cases. And so we've had students who have participated in these internships um, where they spend some time in the fall semester or late fall, early spring, looking at what options are out there, picking something that's really of interest to them. So uh, most recently, one of our, our students was a junior going into her senior year and um, was really interested in applications of mathematics to biology and uh, ecology. Um, and so she she found a couple of choices and you apply to them just like you apply to any other kind of prestigious program. And she was accepted to one at um, Ohio Wesleyan. Yep. And, and she was there for basically eight weeks in the summer and they pay for your room and board. Um, a stipend, a pretty sizable, generous stipend. Um, and she was working on a, a modeling of climate change, change using um, matrices, linear algebra background um, from her courses here at Salve. And she worked with somebody who really was a you know, specialist in that particular field of study. Whereas those of us at Salve, we're not a huge department. None of us is really a specialist in that particular field of study, but it was something she was interested in. And then um, when she came back from that, 
experience, she and I worked together, she had put together um, a research talk and a poster presentation. And then she gave her talk at a number of conferences around the Northeast once she came back home again. It was a great opportunity for her to get some experience speaking in public about her um, math research. So uh, we have you every year there's a cycle of, of applications. I have a student right now who's looking to apply for next year um, and he's more interested in the data science field. So we're gonna look into opportunities there. Um, and then we also have internships that are maybe not research-based. So for example, um, maybe two years ago, I had some students who were really interested in outreach and service to the community, which is very much in line with Salve's Mercy mission. And they wanted to work with um, elementary school children and help them with their, their math study. And um, so we took that on as an internship where they had weekly responsibilities. They would visit the uh, Boys and Girls Club. They would visit the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Center. Um, and they planned programming, weekly programming, based on mathematics, but also based on their assessment of the needs of the students in those after school programs. And so that was kind of a research in a more pedagogical sense, math, math education versus strict um, math research. Those are just some of the, the many opportunities that we have. Well, and I mean, that's amazing because Again, I, I think it gets back to that issue of sort of the big school, small school issue where, you know, I think sometimes people look at mathematical programs or programs in the sciences and think that, well, you've got to be a big, huge research one institution to get the best out of a mathematical department. But in actuality, the advantage of the smaller place is you're going to have much many more opportunities available to you because if the opportunity doesn't exist, we're going to make it happen for you, uh, where where you can't always rely on that and the big research one places, which is which is great. Um, we've covered a lot of ground, which is terrific and, and hit a lot of the high points of the department. I'm, I'm wondering if each of you wouldn't mind just sharing. Is there anything about, you know, Salve students or uh, the S Salve in particular that in the community that really speaks to you in terms of why you enjoy uh, teaching at Salve? Well, Dr. Rothman, you're, you're muted. <laughs> See, I, yeah. get even with, I get even with you this time. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> now we're even. Okay, so um, I, I like the small classes and I, uh, I like having the opportunities to get to know our students because you'd really see them, not just, if you had a big class, you really wouldn't see it as much because it's just, they're just too many. You really couldn't keep track. But having the small classes, you really get the opportunity to get to know the students and actually see them grow professionally and in maturity as they progress through the program. And it, it's just really amazing to see. It's always such a pleasure to see that. Um, I also like the opportunities to innovate in the curriculum. So being a small school and having a major, which is mainly our <clears throat> bread and butter, it's strong enough and weighty enough to make students successful in graduate programs in math because they've gone on and done that. So we have the track record there. But it's also not so heavy that they can't do these other things to explore. So, you know, we wanted a program in data science. We made it happen in a year. And there it is. Part, called, called up people at UMass Dartmouth, uh, got together with them. We have some common contacts. And, you know, we've gone to other schools. We have lots of contacts in these tier one research institutions. So we want to get together with them and, and make some joint program. It doesn't take as much as you would think. So having that flexibility, being in a smaller program, we could say, okay, UMass Dartmouth, they have this, and that's a good one to partner with. Let me call them up and we'll get together on that. It happens in less than a year. So we're working on another one in engineering. Liz did, uh, Dr. Fitzgibbon <laughs> did the you know, agreement. Mostly she was just spearheading that with uh, Washington University very um, well-known, world-renowned university, you know, uh, maybe didn't take a year, uh, but, you know, not really as long as you would think. Uh, so, you know, we have that flexibility to do that. And that's that's just really been an amazing thing to do over the years uh, to be able to have that flexibility. Dr. Fitzgibbon, anything to add? Yeah, I would say, I mean, I 
enthusiasm of our students um, the, for for the things that they're passionate about um, is something that really is enjoyable to like to get to know them well enough to know those things that that get them excited and then to be able to find things um, that we can do to support them to to help them reach their own goals and really um, I think about for example our math club and the kinds of activities that that we do every year I have one or two students who are just real leaders in in our community in our department. Um, take the lead in in organizing social activities that are based on mathematics things like uh, movie nights and uh, game nights and uh, then we have other students who are more uh, competitive in nature and they want to go and participate in the, the collegiate math competition uh, which is held you know every November somewhere in the northeast um, and so getting to know those individual students well enough to know what each one needs and and being able to help them find that um, it's really rewarding and then I think Dr. Dr. Rothman said you know to watch them grow and and become what it is that they want to be um it definitely i'm you know i'm still in touch with our alumni our graduates uh it's great to see them come back and tell us what they're doing one of them is a, a high school teacher right now just in middletown just next town over and um and now he is mentoring some of our current students who are juniors and seniors who are doing their student teaching in that school um it really is this this little tight knit family, and it's I think that's one of the best things about it. So uh, Rihanna, one of the students that's listening in tonight, has a question about the three two program with UMass Dartmouth uh, for data science, mm -hmm. and uh, she would like to know uh, when a student would need to decide if that's something that they wanted to explore when they would have to commit to that. Well, I mean, really, all you would have to do is start taking you know you, you're gonna start out taking the programming course when you come in so we have our freshmen starting taking that first semester if you think you might want to do that take you know continue in the spring with the second course and then you know if uh as you go through it maybe the next year you know you fit in or maybe even the year after maybe even the third year you take the uh, data science data science and analytics sequence so let's say you take that and then you decide you know, you, you didn't decide ahead of time that you want to go to UMass Dartmouth. Well, okay, so you have these extra classes, maybe just have the minor. You don't really need to commit, I don't think, uh, early on. Um, there, there's no requirement to do that. Um, you could say that you think you might want to do that, and then if you maintain an average and you have the courses, you know, then you just transfer over. So that you're not going to have to take a GRE if you're in this program. You just maintain a certain average um within the department and overall and and you just transfer right over so uh you could decide yeah i, I might want to do that let me start taking these classes some of them you're going to take anyway and maybe last minute you say you know this i don't think this is for me i just want to stay here and finish my uh bachelor's degree here and then maybe i'll do something else afterwards so you know there's flexibility you don't have to commit early uh, you could say you're interested and then decide last minute you don't want to do that, and that's fine also. Well, and I think that's amazing. It really speaks to the flexibility really being the word of the evening that uh, we're going to work with students to yeah. help them to get in whatever direction they have to do and not having not being forced to take that GRE is also that that's huge. Um, you know, I, I know a, a number of students at Salve who have been able to pursue these types of uh, of agreements and and not having to worry about studying for those additional exams is really a, a removes some anxiety and stress and allows you to focus more on your actual curriculum and your engagement in the campus community uh, than you know taking six months of your life to just spend t time with with the uh, test prep books. Yeah, that, that that's big. That's a, that's a real big advantage. So. I'll just jump in and say the same is true of the other the three plus two for engineering. Same. And I, I say that that's one of the selling points is that if you go to an engineering school and then you change your mind, well, now you're at an engineering school and you don't want to be an engineer. But if you come to Salve, you can decide right up until the last minute yeah. what path you want to take. And I would say that um, at least half of the students who come in saying they want to do engineering, they want to just do straight math. And they they stay for four years, so um, it is it's a nice option 
you don't have any pressure. Right. Wonderful. Well, as we, uh, oh, no, one more question here. Uh, if someone was to go the education route, mathematics and secondary ed, when would a student start their student teaching? Well, I'm going to take it and I'm going to say there's student teaching and then there's all the other experiences in the school. So um, our students, we try to get them right into the public schools as early as possible. They take a, uh, a tutoring and mentoring uh, course, I believe, in their sophomore year. For one hour a week and tutor in the public schools, they step it up then like each year. So junior year, they have a practicum experience where they're in a school uh, for a full day, one day each week um, for their junior year. And then senior year, um, you're doing that one day in the, uh, or may, maybe I'm mistaken, maybe it's um, one period a day for the first, per week for junior year. And then it's um, one full day a week for the fall of the senior year. And then a full day for the spring of the senior <laughs> year. And um, so that the student teaching is really that spring of your senior year, but the practicum starts earlier than that in the um, in the junior year, and and even before that, you've got some experience hands on in the in the schools in sophomore year. Um, Uh, so, uh, Rihanna, if you have another question, by all means, uh, pop it in the box. Uh, but as we come down to the end of our hour, uh, I just want to, you guys have uh, shared some really wonderful stories of, of some great things that our alumni are doing. Uh, I'm wondering if each of you maybe has one more anecdote or experience with students that you want to share before we close out this evening. I'm trying to think of what we haven't covered, and we, I, I don't want to repeat myself either. Okay, great. <laughs> well, the, you know, I'm, I'm I, sure I, more I will come up in the future. Yeah. So. so I'm sure I left a few things out, but I'm just, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, and it's then now I covered that one already. <clears throat> Wonderful. <clears throat> well, you know, thank you both for taking time out this evening. I, I think really, you know, Salve's math program is, is really a hidden gem. Uh, we'd love to see more math majors uh, because the opportunities are just nonstop for them. I know one of my uh, former interns was a math major and he's now uh, doing some finance work down in Philadelphia and is incredibly successful, uh, probably making a lot more money a year than I am. Uh, and his background is, is in mathematics and that really opened up a lot of doors for him for, for internships and, and then ultimately for a first job. Out of, out of college, so a uh, lot of opportunity there for students and and uh, really just a, a caring and uh, accessible department, which I think all students are looking for in this day and age. Uh, thank you to folks that are either watching this recording or to Rihanna, who is here live as, as we recorded. Uh, just a reminder that November 1st is the early action and early decision deadlines for Salve Regina University. That is the application form submission deadline. So if you're worried that you don't have your letters of rec together or uh, some other aspects that you want to provide in your application, still get that application submitted because the sooner the application is submitted, the sooner we can get you a decision and uh, you can have a, a stress-free second semester of senior year uh, because you know uh, what your results are of your application process. Uh, also, if you have additional questions and want to learn more about the university, this weekend on Sunday is our first fall open house program. Uh, in COVID times, it is virtual, but there's a lot of great offerings uh, that we'll be delivering to you. So go to salve.edu slash visit so that you can register for that program. Uh, and certainly, uh, Drs. Rothman and Fitzgibbon will probably be around on that oh, day yeah. as well if you have additional questions that maybe you didn't get answered this evening. Uh, again, thank you both so much and uh, go Seahawks. Uh, thank you and I'd like to thank those watching in attendance and asking questions and contact us. You don't have to wait for the open house. If you miss the open house, you can contact contact us afterwards. We're accessible. We check our emails. We'll get back to you. And uh, stay tuned because we have some really exciting programs in the pipeline that we haven't revealed yet. <laughs> okay, because that's coming. Wonderful. 
Well, again, thank you all so much and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.